Good day everyone. My name is Miss Elizabeth Elias and I am here to present the contact class for Educational Foundation 1, Diploma in Junior Primary, Year 2, Semester 1. I will be your lecturer for the semester for Educational Foundation 1. And wishing you all the best. It's going to be an exciting journey, hopefully, and we are going to learn, we are going to read, we are going to research, and we are going to do great. Welcome to my contact class. The purpose of the presentation, we are focusing on the highlights on exams and highlights on uh, assignments and the learning outcomes. What is expected for you to know? What are the learning outcomes for this module? First, we have to start with the highlights on exams, and this applies to the, to the assignments also, highlights on exams. Make sure that your student number is written correctly. Uh, Students, you must know. You must always know your student number. You can write it the piece of paper and make sure that it's the correct one. Because most of the students have been losing their maths exams, papers, and everything because of the wrong, um, incorrect student number. Make sure that your student number is written correctly. Make sure that you have written the correct module mo code. Every code has every module has its own code. Make sure that you put the right code, the correct one of the module that you are writing. Read the instructions on the question carefully and ensure you understand what is required before you start writing. It's very much important to read your, the instructions on the question paper before you start writing, before you start making mistakes. And when you make mistakes in exams or in assignment, that means you are already making mistakes on your marks. Please read the instructions carefully. It's very much important. Don't just start answering without checking what, is, what are the instructions of the question paper. Answer questions in the correct order in accordance with the question paper. Please make sure that your, question, your answers are in accordance with the question paper. Because most of the students, they write, they answer question number six instead of answering, instead of putting answers for question number two, they put answers for question number six there. Make sure that you, 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 you answer your questions correctly before you lose out on maths. And the exams highlights continues. Uh, make, sure that, make sure to write complete answers. Do not leave out parts of questions. I've seen this in the previous students that I had. The, there are some of the questions that has that have two parts or maybe three parts that you need to answer. Sometimes it says list and explain. Some of the students, they only list, but then they do not explain. There's already maybe two marks for listing and four marks for explaining. Please make sure that you list and explain. Read all parts of the question and, and answer them so that you gain marks. Consider the marks allocated for each question to determine the length of your answer. This is very much important. If the, answer, if the question has 20 marks, I expect you to write something for 20 marks. You cannot answer a question for 20 marks and then you only give answers for, for a question that has four marks. Make sure that you know the marks are located on the question paper, on the question. Make sure that you know the marks are located. If it's four marks, don't write for me two pages, three pages for four marks. No. If it's 20 marks, make sure that the mark, make sure that the answers that you put there gives you 20 marks. And most of the students are losing marks on this. You must be very careful with this. And concentrate on the module outcomes. You must know what is expected for you to know, what are the learning outcomes for this module, and apply answers to your field of studies. Please make sure that you apply all the answers to your field of study. Even when you are giving examples, make sure that you apply them to your field of study. And there are key verbs in assignments and exams. These are very much important. You can even use your dictionary, you can use your vocabulary just to check on the key verbs in assignments and exams. Make sure that you understand them. If the question asks you to analyze, what does it mean? Make sure that you understand what is to analyze. If the question asks you to compare, Comparing, when it, when it asks you to compare, it doesn't mean that you must differentiate or you must define, you must criticize. It's something different. When you compare, you have two things that you need to compare. You either draw a table to make it very clear for yourself and then you compare the two things. That is the easiest way that I always teach my students that if the question asks you to compare, draw yourself a table just to make sure that you, you answer correctly in order to get the marks. 
list discuss and explain if a question asks you to explain make sure that you explain because most of the most of the students when they are asked to explain they list by that you are not getting marks because you did not focus on the uh, on the key verb that is used explain list identify uh, differentiate distinguish criticize calculate you cannot if i ask you to calculate i do not expect you to explain, to discuss, or compare. Make sure that you calculate. Make sure that you identify. If it, the question asks you to summarize, make sure that you write a summary of what is asked you, or what, is, what, what is required of you to summarize. Relate, that means you have to put different things together and then you relate them. Or maybe you relate a certain concept on something. Make sure that you understand, understand, define, and contrast, and all that there are a lot of key verbs these are the only th these are some of them that i picked up but then you can you can find different types of key verbs in question papers just make sure that you understand them you can also learn some of them on your own check in old question papers check in your vocabulary and all that okay now we are focusing on the on the units the learning outcome for un for unit one which focuses more on uh, issues of uh, history of education and comparative education as discipline. What are the learning outcomes of uh, this unit? You need to clarify the concept historiography. You outline the inquiry process of historiography follows. Identify the sources of information for historian. List the reasons why studying history is important. Examine the educational historiography of the United States of America. Examine the educational historiography of England. Describe the nature and purpose of history of education as a discipline. Outline the nature and purpose of cooperative education as discipline. Clarify the benefits and dangers of comparing history features of education system internationally. Clarify development trends in history and comparative education. Discuss the contribution of value of history of education, comparative education to teacher education. Examine contemporary issues in comparative education, such as suitability of CBE in primary school, financing, financing ICT in schools, and homeschooling and citizen development. Comparative education, this is the study of educational theories and practices in various countries. You attempt to use cross-national data Test proposal about the relationship between education and society and between teaching practices and learning outcome. Policies are influenced by considering the implication of comparative studies, education, social, national and international development. Fields of government, management, sociology and technology, communication, contribute to con uh, their contribution to Comparative education, meaningful to consider other disciplines when studying comparative education. Other disciplines may affect educational research and policy decisions. And always make sure you understand the concepts. You can use your dictionary, vocabularies for all those propositions. You must also understand the importance of developing comparative teaching education as a subject. Educators can consider the insight from the other part of the world when setting standards and procedures to select educate and uh, sanction teachers, promote mutual respect and understanding among people, our interdependent world. Learn about life in other societies and education at all school levels in developed and developing countries in a secular or non-secular formal and informal education settings. Study the what, how and why of teacher education is, is in different social settings develop a broader view of the profession, use a variety of strategies to gather data, ensure the accuracy and comparative nature of teachers' knowledge. I think the vocabulary here is secular and non-secular. You must also learn about that, consult your dictionary and understand them. And also, uh, history can lay the foundation for genuine citizenship because you need to understand history education here. It provides data about the emergency of national institution, problems and values. It's the only significant source of such data available. It offers evidence about how nations have interacted with other societies, 
providing international and comparative perspective essential for responsible citizenship. It helps us to understand how recent, current, and prospective changes that affect the lives of citizens emerge and what causes are involved. Encourage habits of mind vital for responsible public behaviors. And help us, history helps us to understand the change, changes and how the society we live in came to be. Why is the society like this? What are the changes? The past causes the present and so the future. We have to look for factors that took shape earlier. To explain a major development, we need to look further to identify the causes of change. Through studying history, we grasp how things change and begin to comprehend the factors that cause change and understand what elements of an institution or a society persist despite change. History provides extensive materials available to study the human condition on focuses attention on the complex process of social changes and factors causing changes. And history helps us to understand changes and how the society we live in came to be, provide a terrain for moral contemplation, and history allows or tests students their own moral sense against some of the complexity faced in difficult settings it provides inspiration. History pro teaching e example describes the use of study of the past, a study not only on heroes, the great men and women of history who successfully worked through moral dilemmas, and of more ordinary people who provide lessons in courage, diligence, and constructive protest. And help, uh, history may, may help us understand people and societies Reliance on current data would um, needlessly handicap our efforts. We evaluate war in the nation if the nation we, we evaluate war if the nation is at peace when we use historical materials and help us understand genius, the influence of technological innovation, the roles that beliefs play in shaping family life. Um, history serves is uh, our laboratory. Data from the past serve as evidence to figure out why our complex spaces behave as it does in societal, social settings. And history um, offers the only evidential base for contemplation and analysis of how societies function. You must understand the value of history and the benefits and dangers of comparing futures of education system internationally. You also outline the nature and purpose of comparative education as a discipline. That is it for unit one. And then when we, and then we go to unit two, the contribution of selected historical figures. You discuss the contribution of the following selected educational thinkers who have made history who have made to the history of education. This is Plato as Greek educator, Augustine from the Middle Ages, Postalozzi, John Devere, Pierre M. Spady. You need to know the, their contribution. And for Plato conceptualization of the different educational requirements associated with the various lives of stage, the classical Greek consent for body and mind and the importance of exercise discipline of storytelling and games. Children enter school at six, they learn the reading, writing, and counting, and then engage in music and sports. Um, at 18, they undergo military and physical training. At 21, they enter higher studies, and at 30, begin to study philosophy and serve the, spoil, the, 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 the policy in the army or civil servants, that was the contribution of Plato as Greek educator. And you should also know the contribution made by African educators in education, the Juris Nyerere, Kenneth Kaunda, Yomo Kenyatta, special for Juris Nyerere, Yomo Kenyatta and Kenneth Kaunda. Yomo Kenyatta was the first prime minister, and later he became the first president of Kenya. 
who adopted Harambe as a concept of pulling the country together to build a new nation on. He encouraged communities to work together, to raise funds for all sorts of local projects, pledging that the government would provide their start-up cost. Important first figure in the history, he's the important first figure in, the, in their history, and one they will forever cherish. A renowned leader who had vision, initiative, guidance, and he was an international public figure. Kenyatta gave Kenyans hope and a true belief in the future of their country. He instilled in them desire for freedom and independence. And Kenyatta was a man of numerous talents. He was charming and articulate, both of which made him a great politician. And that was his uh, contribution. And then he was a capable, a capable scholar, journalist, teacher, conservationist, and a father figure that Kenya needed. His beliefs are still an inspirational, and uh, Kenyatta told people that they have to be able to live in the light to live. And from the, his treatment of outsiders and willingness to work with them to accomplish great things for Kenya. And with John Defe, uh, he, his contribution was school's role of helping in the transformation to a better social order. He recognized the nature of class barriers and distinction, age that schools should help in their elimination. According to Devi, the school's role in the enhancement of social life in general and the evils of capitalism in particular should not include the teaching of any kind of economic or socialism. Instead, through the study of an active engagement in basic social activities, such as growing food, cooking, building a shelter, making clothing, creating stories and artwork, children could be best initiated into moral social membership. And uh, with Viriam Spady, according to Viriam Spady, uh, organizing for research, basing what we do instructionally on the outcomes we want to achieve. Um, then he also designed the curricula and instructional systems that they believe will produce this exist outcome. For more details, you can contact your, your module for that. I can only speak about some of them. The rest of them, you can check your module. There's also Julius Nyerere, who made to a, 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 he was the type of educator that made the community development develop workers, political activist, and religious teacher. He inspired both in desire for change and in understanding that change is possible. He helped people to make their own decisions and implement those decisions. Also, the last on this unit is that you must be able to clarify the action. You must be able to clarify the African Ubuntu educational philosophy and its implication to teaching and learning. On unit three, it focuses on international historical development of primary education, explains some historical international development in primary education and the international early childhood education policy and legal framework, explain the international rights and responsibilities of the child, explain the international educational rights of the child, explain the rights and responsibilities of the junior primary, pre-primary teacher. You must know your rights and responsibilities as a teacher for junior primary and pre-primary. Explain the possible steps to be taken when the educational rights of a person are violated. You know, early childhood education is the care and instruction of young children outside the home. Pre-primary education is unique. It starts with a child and not with a subject matter. One common principle overshadows the different approaches to pre-school education that early childhood curriculum and practice must be adapted to the maturing needs, abilities, and interests of the child. And the core principles of the rights or the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is devotion to the best interest of the child, the right to life, survival, and development, and respect for the views of the child. The views of the child has to be respected. 
And education can create an effective conceptual framework based on equal rights and the best interests of, the, of each child. Schools should adapt to each child rather than reject those labeled difficult to educate. Educational policies, school curricula, teaching materials or any training program should reflect and be developed in accordance with human rights principles. The human rights concept and values should be integral part of all process of education. Education can, creative, can create an effective conceptual framework based on equal rights and the best interests of each child. Any training or educational program to be consistent with the human rights, principles should provide knowledge and information on about human rights and also to seek to develop attitude and behavior respectful of those rights. Inclu include the development of basic skills such as critical thinking, communication skills, problem solving, and negotiation, essential to the implementation of human rights standards. Children learn through observation rather than exhortation, thus the recognition of their rights in education will greatly facilitate human rights education. The reasons why children may be excluded from schooling, the reasons why children may be excluded from schooling is that because they are indigenous, they are refugees, because they don't have identity papers, they need to have documents in school for them to be included in schools. And if they do not have them, they be excluded from schooling. And in many countries, non-citizens do not have a legal recognized right to education, excluding asylum seeking and uh, refugee children. In addition, children with disabilities may be excluded from school, whatever the law says, because the building make their access impossible. There is no trained staff to work with them, and the environment is not welcoming. But I think now with our education system here in Namibia, things have changed, and uh, everybody is now included because of that inclusive education. Gender equity in Namibia, often education as a single sector does not, on its own, generate sufficiently attractive incentives for the girls' parents. Even if they are educated, girls cannot apply their learning to sustaining themselves or helping their parents. Schooling appears to have no benefit when women do not have access to employment. Uh, from, uh, from becoming self-employed, do not have a choice as to whether to marry or bear children and have no opportunities for political presentation. And you must also know the possible steps to be taken when the educational rights of a person is violated. That is it for Unit 3. And we go for Unit 4, which lies under the features and effects of colonial education on the Namibian people. Examine the features of missionaries' education as part of the colonial education. Examine the features of German colonial education. We'll go in details. Examine the futures of South African colonial education in Namibia before independence. Describe the effects of colonial education on the social economic development in Namibia and outline the effect of apartheid education on the psychology of Namibians. South African colonial education. Uh, Fervold is the father of apartheid. He was a South African leading actor of apartheid and declared the education would always be separate, unequal, and designed to let Africans develop exclusively within their own communities. The principle supported the underlying philosophy of Christian national education in South Africa. It was geared to, uh, to ensure that all nations would guard their own identity by educating their children in their mother tongue and fostering in them a strong national and cultural identity. With the German colonial education, education was an instrument of oppression during the colonial and apartheid rules in Namibia. During the German colonial rule, schools were built on the white. History has it that the Germans, in fact, never came to grips with the objective of education for the Africans. 
The German administration did, however, ensure that the kind of training made available saved the needs of the masters of the country, a source for servants and laborers for African education was designed to keep them inferior and to avoid inculcating ideas as democracy, human freedom, and the like. The main socioeconomic problems and challenges in the Namibian education system, the country has been unable to provide adequate skilled human resources, high rates of unemployment and underemployment, current level of expenditure on education may not be suitable in the long run owing to low economic growth and increasing government budget defeats, still a need to improve the conditions for teaching and learning, especially in the rural areas to improve the quality of educational outcomes, particularly mathematics, science and English. Uh, the mission is in the process of organizing and strengthening advisory service structures by establishing educators, educator development and support units in all education regions, a number of policies essential for implementation of EFA have been developed, but there are challenges in ensuring coordination of efforts towards the wide dissemination and implementation by all stakeholders. A special challenge is to reach out to the educationally marginalized, the impoverished, and uh, those living in the most remote areas of the country. Uh, the main socio-economic problem and challenges Namibian education system, in the Namibian education system, the population growth has been uh, affected by the worsening HIV and AIDS infection, which has led to many deaths, particularly among the young productive age group. Uh, the government task of uh, decentralizing functions to regions, the high unemployment rate, particularly among the youth and the inadequate financial resources available to address these issues. Now we go to Unit 5, the major reforms in pre-primary education after independence. Discuss why reforms are important in education system. Discuss the Namibian perspective of uh, education for all, equity, access, equality, and quality. I want to, uh, most of the students, like the previous students that I had, they made errors on this question or they made, they do not understand the difference between equity, equality, and quality. Please consult your dictionary, consult your module, and know the difference between the three words because equality means something else, quality means something else, and so is equity. So you must know the difference. And sometimes they can ask you to list the Namibian uh, perspectives of education for all. List and explain. When you list, you list the four perspectives and then you explain them or you discuss them. Explain the major reforms, especially primary up to date in education system in Namibia after independence. Example, Education Act 16 policies regarding various issues, goals of the school faces, structures of the education system, priorities, the BETD program, etc., new primary Bachelor of Education programs, 2011 conference priorities, career education proposals, etc. Explain the features of the current Namibian pre-primary curriculum and the related to the lower primary curriculum. When you look at this outcome, they explain, they also relate, those are the key verbs that you should also learn and know more about them when it, the question asks you to relate. It means you give a relationship, explain, you go in details. Describe the role of NIED in enhancing the quality of pre-primary education and teacher education in Namibia. What is the role of NIED in increasing the quality of pre-primary education? You need to understand what is NIED, you need to know what is the role of NIED in increasing the role of uh, the quality of uh, pre-primary education and teacher education in Namibia. 
explain the need for formal pre-primary education, why is formal pre-primary education needed, why is it important, why is it essential. You must understand because any time can be used for that. Name the legal requirements for establishing an early childhood, childhood center in Namibia. What are the legal requirements? What, what one needs to know legally when establishing an early child center in Namibia? When it, something says legally, that means it's law. So what needs, what, what, what are the legal requirements for establishing an early childhood center in Namibia? Discuss the structure and administration of the national school education system in Namibia. Discuss whether the, 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 our school education system succeed in addressing unemployment, poverty, crime, and economic development. Um, one of the exams that I marked, we had a question like this, and most of the students have failed it. So you must know whether our edu how our school education system succeed in addressing economic development how it helps or it brings or provides awareness to prevent crimes in addressing poverty and also addressing unemployment. Read more on this, economic development, crime, poverty, unemployment, and uh, yes. And the last unit is uh, unit six, shaping educational systems. Describe the concept education system. What do you understand by the concept education system? Describe it and go in details. Analyze the historical development of the following junior primary education system of selected developed countries, developed and developing countries in terms of goals, broad curriculum and some policies. Understand when it says in terms of goals, broad curriculum and some policies. Uh, this is Finland, China, Zimbabwe, Australia, and South Korea. What are the historical development of the junior primary education system in these countries? And you should be able to compare the current Namibian junior primary national curriculum with the above five countries in terms of goals, broad curriculum, and uh, some policies. Compare is also a key verb. If it says compare, that means you compare two things. Like here, you compare Namibian junior primary and uh, the Zimbabwean junior primary. You compare the two in terms of goals, broad curriculum, and some policies. Uh, also examine how the following factors of foundation influence education systems over time the historical development, the philosophical views, educational psychology insights, society features and issues, and also economic conditions. This was it for Unit 6, and that was it for the contact class for this module, Education Foundation 1. Uh, I have provided my contact details at the beginning of this presentation. If you have any question, if you have anything that you would like to ask me concerning the module, you can contact me on my email address and also my cell phone number appears there. Yes, I wish you all the best in your studies. Go and achieve, go and triumph over. You will make it read, read and research. You will be great. Thank you so much for having me.